Hi! Hi! Hey, guys, enjoy that. Who is, is there anyone who saw that for the first time tonight? Oh, wow! Cool. And Filipino saw that for the first time tonight. I hate to call you out. Yeah, cool, right? Who would have thought Dino Guan would make network TV, huh? Um, anyways, so again, thank you for coming out. So I would like to welcome to the stage actors from Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Bella Lavelle and Vincent Rodriguez the third. Give me a round of applause. Just like that with you. Go, go. And if you guys want some tea, there's some tea here. <laughs> I had my bulb at this one. Yeah. I think it's on. Is it is it working? Test. 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 Is it on? Technical difficulty? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. Hold. Talk amongst yourselves while we. <laughs> well, we're, we're screen and theater. Right? Yeah. Usually it's like right here. Is it good? Check. Oh, there we go. Check. Let's hear it for the tech team. Okay. <laughs> As I lay a tag. Thank you, sir. Um, so, look, okay, like we're gonna start with, I wanna read you guys a story, apparently. Hi, read us a story, do you know? So thank you guys for coming out. We're, it's, we're so excited, you guys, to have you here. The episode is, is pretty monumental, I guess, like, just because, you know, it's, it's the first time, you know, we've seen, like, a Filipino Thanksgiving, and just, it, and all that, but we'll, we'll get to the episode in a little bit. I guess we wanted to start, like, kind of your meager beginnings, and, like, when you wanted to, when, when the moment you wanted to go into acting, and, um, yeah, and, like, was there a particular actor, movie, uh, play that you saw that you were all, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life? Bella? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> um, well, I was, I don't know, I guess I always, um, did like when I was little would like put on plays for my family like in my living room like at Thanksgiving and stuff like one of those obnoxious kids that runs like uh, quiet down eventually um, and then I, I thought I was going to be a concert pianist which but that was a whole other direction so I actually went to art boarding school for piano and then was just like playing piano um, by myself in a room for like eight hours a day and was like this is not what I want to do um, and so kind of like pursued um, pursued theater and um, went to NYU for um, undergraduate and then I just graduated from Juilliard for um, for grad about a year ago. So I'm kind of like new to the whole uh, film and TV world. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. <laughs> cool. Wanna go? I guess. Do you wanna, oh, there's no answer. Um, what was the question? <laughs> meager beginnings? Yeah, yeah, Who says they're meager? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, hey. Yeah, well, well um, so I'll start off by saying, hi, I'm a local. Yeah, from local. Daily City. Uh, went to Westmore High School, service commissioner, holla. <laughs> the chances that some of you went to Westmore, I'd be like, yeah, of course you did. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I did theater there my freshman year, because I went to Fernando Rivera Middle School, that's where I started band. So I was, I, I was basically a, a, a kid martial artist who thought he wanted to be an action hero, and I did that, started that in the second grade, and did Aikido in the fourth grade, and then when I got to junior high, so, uh, band, because I had played piano too when I was a kid. Hey! Um, and, uh, and I didn't have theater until I got to, to, to high school, and, uh, but I was still a martial artist, so uh, before I graduated high school, I, I had two black belts, one in Shotokan and one in Taekwondo, I did, I, I did a lot of community service. I was a drummer in jazz band, and uh, I played clarinet and symphonic band and wind ensemble, and I was in, a drum major for my marching band for two years. And, um, and then, I guess, like, uh, martial arts kind of fell by the wayside, and I started to like, take dance classes, and um, I graduated from Westport, uh, class of 2000. And then a year later, after, like, a semester at Skyline and the College of San Mateo, I was like, I need to do theater. So I went to, um, I got accepted to the Pacific Conservatory of Performing Arts, graduated in 2003 in May, and then a few months later in August, I booked the first national tour of 42nd Street, which was still on Broadway at the time, and I toured with for nine months, 
and the tour ended, and everyone was going back to New York, and I was like, uh, can I go to New York too? Can I go to there? And they were like, yeah, you can. So I did, and I remember I stayed at a friend's house, and I had to take three modes of transportation from Jersey just to get into the city, and I carried around like a 60 pound duffel bag on my back, and I had a 15 pound laptop, and all my dance shoes and changes of clothes, and I auditioned in New York for like three months, and I had two job offers, and I took one of them, and that was for White Christmas, um, which premiered here at the Current Theater, ironically, a few years ago, many years ago. So that, that kind of propelled me, like the tour and then doing White Christmas, and then going back to New York, I did a lot of theater, I did theater for 12 years, and then fast forward to my audition for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and the rest is history. Cool, so, wow. Very rich histories. Can I just take a sidebar to say, I always joke, I think Vinny is a special skill. Like, he has so many amazing talent. Like, he's like a martial artist, dancer. Like, I feel like the list just goes on. Like, pure renaissance, man. He oh, is, yeah. yes. I learned what that was, um, I learned what that was when I was in high school and said, I want to be like that. I'll be a renaissance man. I'll just do everything. Well, we see each and every one of your skills on the show eventually. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> And, there's, and we're not done yet, so there's a few more episodes of still season finale. You're about to get a, a really oh, awesome surprise. A <laughs> martial artist, a drum major. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Something's <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh, and it's gonna be good. Speaking of, like, yeah, it's not gonna end, but congratulations on being picked up for season two, guys. <laughs> That was so crazy. The first time I, I saw Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, it was like nothing I've ever seen before, and it was so fresh, so interesting. Um, but besides that, it's like Vincent, uh, the character of Josh is probably the only Asian American romantic lead on TV, like a romantic comedy sitcom right now. Yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're right. I think no. I think with all the articles that have been out in the last few months, I think you are yes. right. Because <laughs> someone would have been like, no, in 1970 or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you when you were reading the script board, what, like right now, how do you do you see this as a shift in of in the portrayal of the, the uh, Asian American male? Like we've always seen the Asian American males as like 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 martial artists or kind of the, just the guy in the background, kind of like. There's, there's no sexuality to him. Yep, yep. A, an asexual or a sidekick or in that realm. Yeah. yeah. Do you see, how do you see that sh uh, shifting right now? Did you see that shifting when you kind of signed on to Crazy Ex Girlfriend? Or? Signed on? <laughs> Mind you, I still watch it like the rest of us. Well, when I created Crazy Ex Girlfriend for my own, no, uh, I was in Here Lies Love, which is a Filipino, uh, all Filipino cast. It's a disco paparetta about the rise and fall of the Marcos administration in the Philippines. Um, that show is by far one of the best musicals I've ever seen in my life, Here Lies Love. And, um, I, and I got to be in the cast, they remounted the show for a, a second time, and I was in that cast and I covered, ironically, Jose Lana, Broadway star, Jose Lana, Filipino, and Conrad Ricamora, who was in How to Get Away with Murder. And um, he, Conrad actually booked that part while we were in the run of Fear Lies Love. And I was just a swing. I was an understudy. And I had understudied those two guys and three other men in the show, including the DJ. And um, so I guess I was just in the show understudying people and doing, that's what I do. I've understudied many times in my career. And uh, I didn't really see a shift happening. Um, I got, I, I got the breakdown and my agent was like, hey, can you audition for this? It's on your only day off of the week. You know, are you okay going in on your day off? I'm like, dude, do you know me? I'm like, of course I'm gonna audition. <laughs> I audition for everything. <laughs> um, and uh, I did. And I, I guess it was, it was, I don't know, it wasn't, it didn't, I didn't know how, how much it would mean now then. I just saw a part that described me and I thought, well, this is interesting. I don't. I'm not used to that. Because uh, as an Asian male actor, I'm not used to reading a breakdown, which is basically what the agents get that describes all the characters in like a movie or a play or whatever. And that's how they submit their actors to audition. But I, I, I never saw one that described me. Um, and so that was already like a, oh cool, something that describes, and I, I'm, like the feature, I'm like the male love interest, that's kind of neat. I'll audition for that. No clue what it would become today. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed, call back, call back, and then I became 
I got cast in this role, and then we had a Skype meeting before we filmed the pilot about who Josh was, and then I gave them like all my special skills and kind of how I grew up and you know how I really relate to Josh, and then they they kind of alter they they alter it for okay. me, tailored it to that. So I think this a shift has occurred, and um, it, it's it's great that it happened on this show because of you know what Aline and Rachel are trying to do with the material. And I think it's just a part of the bigger picture of what they're trying to do with, with television and um, but with, with, with the show, and just how, how they write it and the humor and how it's all inclusive and breaking down stereotypes and you know throwing TV tropes out the window and, and re, redefining, I guess. Um, that's the path that we're on. And, and it's unfortunate that it's taken this long to like kind of normalize, but hopefully this is like a, a trend that will actually become a non-trend just become fat. Normal. Yeah. Normal. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Commonplace. Common. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're on that road. Cool. Um, and Bella, uh, I think you being a, a, a woman of color in the business, um, you know, it, it sounds weird like calling you a double minority. That sounds like really weird. <laughs> that was like double <laughs> jeopardy. I was <laughs> just a devil. Well, it's like, I mean, you, you said this, you're kind of like new, fresh on the scene. Like, and like, how cognizant were you of like, you know, what you were getting into, I guess, like, and have you, when you were like, um, like in school or like watching TV, like how were you seeing women of color uh, portrayed or just like even women in general? Yeah. Well, um, well, what's funny, I mean, like at Juilliard, you know, you train in theater. So we were, you know, doing a bunch of Shakespeare and like Chekhov and all that stuff. And it like doesn't, and like you're, you never think about like, Oh, like I'm, and I'm mixed. I'm black and white, and like a million things in between. Um, but like I, um, I, you know, I never thought like, oh, I can't play this part in school because I'm, you know, because I'm a woman of color. And then you know, you start to do these industry classes and audition and stuff, and all of a sudden, it's all about what you look like, and it's all. And people think that I look Indian all the time, or I look look South Asian, and so. I was all of a sudden getting a lot of that, and I was like, I don't, but I, what? <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's been, but I'm super interested in, like, the dialogue of just, like, what it means to look a certain way versus what you are, and, and stereotypes, and, like, I don't know, what's on the surface, and then what's actually underneath, and, um, but yeah, so, like, I was, I get a lot of different, different ethnicities kind of thrown at me when, um, when like auditioning. So I'm so used to just like being like, the name, what's the ethnicity? You know, <laughs> like kind of scrolling and being like, okay, what's like, what am I doing today? And so when I got this audition, it was so exciting for me. It was a totally different experience than Vinny because it was just um, Heather, like my character's okay, name. Yeah. So there was no ethnic specificity. And that is also really exciting to me, just in the same way. I also get really excited if there's something that's my exact like racial makeup, I'm like, oh my god, you know, because it's so exciting to see yourself, like, oh, they want exactly yeah. me, but it's also exciting, I think, for an actor to see, it could be anybody, like, this could be any girl, and it could, so this could be me, you know, just as much as it could not be me, you know, so it was really exciting for me to, I think, uh, approach this audition, thinking, like, this could, this could just as well be me, and then, when I got the part, they were just like, it's going to be you. We want it to be authentic to who you are and specific to who you are. And I think that's just as huge as putting um, a specific minority on screen. Um, is just accepting like of the person, yeah. you know, and saying like, we want just you to be on yeah. screen, you that's know? Awesome. Yeah. So. Cool. So, yeah. so now we come to the portion of the show where we, <laughs> I'm thinking this really weird face, right? Now we come to the portion of the show. It's kind of condescending. I'm sorry. Yeah, but we have a cool chair, too. So I, like, well, I feel like I'm like all sunken down like this. <laughs> like I'm like this old crotchety man reading a story to them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, if you have a question, we have a mic in the middle of the aisle. Come up. To, yeah, come on guys, don't be shy. I told I you you have a burning question. I see you guys, come on, get get to it. Come on. Right, you guys are getting in line. I'm gonna uh, uh, comment on what Bella said. Um, I I mean, I, the Josh Chang character, Josh Chang was what the breakdown said. Uh, mid, 20, mid to late 20s, affable, charming, um, Southern California dude, um, object of Rebecca Bunch's affection, 
Uh, and like, I feel like the fact that they wanted an Asian guy was cool and great for me, but I often say that Josh Chan could be played by any, any ethnicity. I think they chose for it not to be played by a white person because we've seen that. And I think, I, I know for a fact that Aline and Rachel wanted to tell a fish out of water story. You know, that's just why it wasn't in LA, it was in West Covina and not New York. And it, or New York in the pilot, but the point was to look at a piece of America that wasn't, you know, something we had seen and to really kind of reflect the America that we really do see when we walk outside, as opposed to what is just kind of being fed to us by movies and TV for various reasons. And so, um, you know, kudos to them, the, our, our, co our creators and executive producers and how they want to pioneer that story. So, but, but I feel like Josh, like Rebecca Bunch could have easily fall in love with a black guy in high school, you know what I mean, and then chase them across the country. Because it's really not about our race, but I think we're talking about it here today, but I think that's what we're getting to, yeah. is to that point. But I think, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say Yeah, like, cool. It could be about anyone. Yeah. So, yeah, we got say your name, where you're from, and whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> your favorite food, your favorite your social security number, so we have that on file. Uh, maybe not that. <laughs> uh, my name is James Arceus, uh, I live here in San Francisco, uh, but I grew up in West Covina. Uh, so many West Covinians. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so technically I grew up in Walnut, but I went to high school in West Covina, awesome. um, and uh, I teach here now at the University of San Francisco. Oh, so, awesome. so, so you guys have folks from really? 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 high yeah. school, no gavels. Be proud, um, guys. We are. So, <laughs> so actually, I'm really excited about this show because of Asian American representation. Um, you know, I think that it's, it really is groundbreaking. So I think that's what we're going to show. When I first found out about it, is actually first found out about it because it was a show setting. In taking place in West Covina. Oh, yeah. That's where, yeah, and then I found out, oh, there's an Asian American lead and there's a diverse cast, and I was really appreciative of that. And also, because I'm writing my book on the Sankable Valley, so I'm really <laughs> excited to see this. I can add this in my book. There you go. Um, so, actually, related to your, what you just said, I was just curious, um, you know, how, how do you learn about the local history of that area? Because you're from up here, but you guys are actually did a really good job of representing West Covina. <laughs> <laughs> And I really appreciate your comment because I grew up there and I think it's it's forgotten, it's off the map of what people think of Los Angeles uh, and most metropolitan areas, they forget about the outskirts and the diversity of the outskirts of um, major metro areas, LA, San Francisco, New York. So how did, who does that like work? Um, you know, I'm not in the industry, so I'm just curious how you guys got on all this factual stuff, for the most part. And well, I, I so spent 24 good. hours and camped out in West Covina at a strip mall, and to really, really dive into <laughs> what Josh Chan was. All, the boba. all of that is a lie. Uh, no, well, I grew up in Daly City, which I affectionately say is the West Covina of San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Josh Chan went to like West Covina High, I went to Westmore High School. You can't get any more Asian and diverse than that. Um, so I grew up in, I, I lived Josh's life, and I think one of the important things to realize when, um, you know, like when you look at me, Vince, playing Josh, like I grew up the way Josh grew up, we lived two different places, but very similar. Like if you go to a West Covina of another state or another city, you might find a lot of similarities there, and I think like how many times do you meet someone like, my God, are you where I'm, where I'm from? No, I'm from this other small town somewhere else, but you're also Asian. Well, I'm Asian. Well, I grew up with like this. Well, I grew up like this. Like we're not that different, you know? So um, when you say like we got it right, well, I know for a fact that they, they scout West Covina. They have, they have the footage. We filmed there a few times um, and they have that vibe down. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like I just I just live that life. I don't worry. Will I capture West Covina? I just have to be myself. Cause I I feel like Josh and I are just so similar. Like I know this story. I lived this story, so I don't have to wonder about it. And I think it's a story like a lot of us share. And I think that's what's neat too is that we get to see that and that that representation. So when you guys get to watch it, viewers like I've seen how I grew up, or I'm seeing my friends, or our dynamics. I'm like, oh my gosh, that my friend went through that, or like. That song is so funny because, and then you have like some personal story attached. I think that's happening more and more. 
And so, um, I mean, that's, that's how I feel about that kind of connection. But you're from Santa Fe, though, right? Yeah, but I was, I was actually born in Southern California and then moved to New Mexico when I was like five. But I was born in Loma Linda, do you guys know? Which I've, ne I've only been when I was zero, when I was born. <laughs> Yeah, and so I have a lot of family in California, so when I did my audition, they were like, are you from California? Because we're like sensing a SoCal kind of vibe, and I was like, I guess, right. <laughs> but I guess like, yeah, I guess like, but it's, it's so cool. I think the most exciting thing is like when you can recognize yourself or you can recognize like something on stage or on, on, on screen because it makes you feel like, like, hey, that's, I don't know, it's like this. You're you connect all, with it. You yeah. connect with that, and it makes, I don't know, it gives you a sense of place. So that's awesome. Thank you. And I appreciate also the Catholic guilt jokes, because I feel guilty watching. I like the Filipino priest. He thinks it's really hot, actually. Also, <laughs> like, Father Rob, yeah. Yeah. So one of our writers, Rene Goubet, yeah. who also wrote, wrote the episode you just watched. Well, he, he, he wrote another episode that's coming up, and that's a surprise. <laughs> It'll be very obvious that he wrote it. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. Come on up. Come on, guys. Hi. Don't be shy. Margaret and I'm from Oakland and I have a daughter in um, an art school and I was just wondering if you were to step back to when you were younger and you could give yourself one piece of advice before you started on this journey what would you what would you wish that you had been able to somebody I already know <laughs> before you finish the question <laughs> um, I would have said to myself Vince don't be afraid to be your authentic self and share that with the world in whatever field you choose to do that in. It took me a long time as an actor to give myself permission to be more than what I thought I could be, because I'm really hard on myself, and I still hear that from people. But a few years ago, I was going through some tough times and taking acting classes in New York and struggling and waiting tables and just kind of getting upset, and very angry, and uh, frustrated with the business because roles weren't being written for me, and I'm Asian, and what am I going to do? And, only be in the ensemble for so long um, but when you start to just get in tune with what you can offer and what your point of view is and what brings you joy and what contribution you want to make to the world to everyone's lives like everything then I think things kind of fall into place and I'll use Rachel Boom as an example because she she trained to be an actor you know New York actor like we did but she was like this isn't gonna work for me I'm gonna go do comedy because I like comedy and I'm gonna write comedy with my friends. So she moved to LA and wrote comedy she be and she produced her own video and it became a viral hit overnight. And then she continued to produce more videos. Cre she continued to create and be honest with what she could create as an artist. And then now she has her own show. She's executive producer, co-creator. She writes, she had writer, she writes all the songs and she stars in it. She's 28 years old. And I'm very proud of her, and I use Rachel Bloom as, a, as an inspiration to me. And I think for all of our journeys as actors, I think it's important for us to recognize that and understand that you just, you know, you don't always know if it's gonna, you're gonna have your own hit show on a network television, but it's just as important to be honest with yourself and what you wanna do with your life and be happy. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can follow that, but just, <laughs> I don't know, I guess that there there is a place for everyone somewhere in yeah. this journey and I guess like to just yeah, to just know that and that like the road may be hard and long or short and quick and fast, but um but that I don't know, everything everything will kind of work out in the end. <laughs> everything will work out. Yeah, actually what I would I would say everything will, will work out. All right. Everything will be okay. Don't fret, little one. Yes. Everything Go to sleep. will be all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we have like five minutes, so oh, I'm sorry. And oh, and then now the line started. Oh, now you are. Shy people. Yeah, so say your name and your, a your age. <laughs> say your name, where you're from, who your favorite X-Men character is. Say your name. 
Okay, now I feel like I'm on the spot. Okay, so my name is Danby. Um, I actually teach over at Cal State East Bay, I teach Asian American Studies. So it's so refreshing to see, uh, so refreshing to see a diverse cast. And so one of the things that I, uh, one of the lessons I plan around is the pressure that Asian American actors have being Asian American, um, being like a groundbreaker. So like uh, Margaret Cho, Mindy Kaling faced the same thing when they looked at her um, cast as not being very um, diverse enough. Uh, Randall Park faced the same thing, like, you know, thinking about how he wants to represent being an immigrant uh, parent coming in and having like fake an accent, he got flat from the community from that. So I was wondering if you guys feel any of those pressures or those burdens of trying to live up to something that either Hollywood uh, expects or society expects. Five minutes, go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need like that. I know, well, I, I don't know, it's like, yeah, it's, be, I don't know, just speaking for, on, on my half, um, people think that I'm something that I'm not, which is like a very bizarre <laughs> um, uh, type of existence. But, um, but I think if you really thought about all the pressures, I don't know, from, from my perspective, if you thought about all the pressures and like, I have to be the one person that represents my entire race, you would like never get up in the morning, you know? Because like, it's, I don't know, it's something that like means a lot to, I think, I don't know, everyone who's um, so, like a minority in some way, like it does mean a lot. And you just have, I have to just trust for myself that like me being up there is going to be enough. And that, um, that if I'm true to like myself in whatever way, that someone out there who looks like me will be like, yes, I, that, that's me too. And I see that that person is on screen and is, um, I don't know, getting the space to be themselves. And so that, uh, that's just been my mantra the last year, I would say. And I, uh, um, I, I, I rarely have to, I, I, in a lot of roles I've played on stage, I've had to either have speak Japanese or have a Chinese dialect or speak Chinese Mandarin, Cantonese. Um, and uh, I always try my best, and I, <laughs> I don't know how good my Mandarin is or my Cantonese is. But I, I, I booked me. I booked the job, and they're like, it's fine, it sounds fine. I'm like, the fact that you're saying that to me does not make me feel like you do not speak this language. So all I have to say is, um, yeah, have integrity in your work, do your best. I think that's what all of us are trying to do. I don't think any of us are really trying to insult each other. I think we're just trying to do our best with whatever job we have. And um, if people don't know, it, information now is easier to get. Like, now it's no, there's no excuse for me to not know how to, to not know how to say the lines that Bun Fu and Ching Ho say in the Broadway musical Thoroughly Modern Millie, because there's probably a, a learning tape, a learning CD now, all over the internet and YouTube on how to say those lines correctly. The, when I first got them, it was a tape cassette, and I couldn't hear anything, and I'm like looking at vowel substitutions on Google, like, um, and learning all my, getting all my IPA and transcribing and trying to pay justice to this beautiful language that I don't speak very well. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you just do your best and you wake up in your morning and everyone has those struggles and all you can do is wake up and do your best and know that you're you're trying to res respect. respect your culture and anyone else's and that's all anyone can do. Maybe we could do one, yeah, just real real quick, you guys could ask this question at the same time if you are. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do a lightning round. Yeah, lightning round. <laughs> lightning round. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, real, real quick. Snap, snap. How, how have your characters, uh, you, you said the casting calls were loosely defined, how have your characters evolved, do, um, and how did they cater to your personalities and talents? Oh, one okay. Rachel one time said to me, um, said in an interview, uh, Josh, Josh evolved to be more of a, warm, a, a warmer character because of my, my natural disposition as Vince, and that was really sweet and very flattering to me. Um, it's something I didn't really catch because when I'm on set, I'm not like be warm, be be yo, you know. <laughs> I'm just trying to be like natural and not be as unfunny as her because she's geniusly funny and I just laugh at her all the time. Um, I at you, well, you know, with you. Um, so I think all of our characters have kind of evolved because as, as we get as we get these scripts and they're writing rewriting jokes and, and getting to know the characters, so are we. And I think it's kind of a cycle, like the writers are getting, are, know so much about these characters that we're learning about the characters and then we're um, kind of putting our spin on it or bringing us to it. And then the writers, I think, meet us halfway. Uh, like I never feel like I'm not Josh. Like they always are encouraging me to just find 
more Josh, but I find more Josh through just kind of myself, I guess. Yeah, yeah I would just echo that. They, the writers kind of start to write to, to what you start to bring to the table. So like, I, like, I don't think Heather was ever as deadpan as I was like, on the page. I don't know, I just randomly did it at the audition that day. It was so good. I, was like, I, I guess I'll try that. Yeah, and then it just they just kind of took that and rolled. Like, She's rolled the neighbor it. everyone wants to have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or do they? But like, yeah. So it's it's been cool. It's like the more you kind of put out there, the more that they take it and kind of run with it. Well, I'm sorry. We're gonna have to wrap up. I'm sorry. Um, but. I'm sorry. That was oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, anyway, thank you guys for coming out. Give Vincent and Bella a round of applause. Um, thank you guys once again for coming out. We really appreciate it. We love the show. We're back again on season two. We're looking forward to everything you guys have to offer. And also, this um, episode will, I mean, this, um, this conversation will be on the Off White podcast that I host. Um, provided by GoTo Productions, it would be it will be on the campus website or the Cam website. Look it up. You can relive it over and over again <laughs> until the day is done. So, <laughs> thank you again, guys.